Hi everybody, Steven here. In this video, I'm going to talk about what static and ephemeral binding is on a poor group on a distributed switch. But more importantly, I'm going to tell you why you really need to know this, especially if you ever want to recover your vCenter server. So you need to stick around and watch this video. See you in a bit. Thanks for sticking around. So this should be a pretty quick video, but I say that all the time, don't I? Um, so we're gonna talk about the differences between a static port binding and an ephemeral port binding, but more importantly, how it can impact us from restoring a vCenter server. And you might be wondering, why do I need to know this? If your vCenter server is on a port group on a distributed switch that it manages, so we have this chicken and egg scenario, and you don't have any standard switches available, doing restore can actually be quite challenging. And I'll show you that towards the end. But anyways, uh, before we begin, I'd like to throw this out there. For those of you that have subscribed to the channel and said super thanks, very uh, thank you very much. I really appreciate your support. Two thumbs up to, you, to all you folks. Three thumbs up. Uh, for those of you that are new to the channel, please consider supporting it. Uh, it's so simple. Just click on that subscribe button. Totally free, right? And without supporters, uh, so without subscribers, there's no content developers, right? Other ways to support the channel, liking, sharing, all that stuff is great. Uh, even super thanks and even leaving comments and questions down below. And I answer them all uh, when, when people leave comments. So anyways, why don't we get started? Okay, so let's uh, take a look at this demo here. So um, I've used this lab environment a few times. Uh, so why don't we just take a quick look. Uh, if I look here, you'll see I got a, a straightforward cluster. I've got some hosts in here. Um, you know, I got three hosts. I got vSAN and some other hosts here. Don't worry about the vSAN health. Uh, I've got some other VMs over here as well. Main thing I want to show you, here's my ESXi hosts. Um, if I look, you'll see my host has basically four NICs hooked up to a distributed switch. There is no standard switches here. Same thing with all the hosts. So um, I'm utilizing the distributed switch or everything. Management, vMotion, vSAN, the whole bit. I got four NICs, but that, the number of NICs doesn't really matter in this, this demo, okay? So uh, let's look at my distributed switch. So I'll click on that. You'll see I got one distributed switch. I got a whole whack load of port groups here for management, replication. It doesn't really matter. Let's create a port group. Let's right click, say a distributed port group, new distributed port group. I'm gonna give it a name. I'm gonna call it PG-Production. Okay, PG production, and I'm gonna go next. Notice that the uh, the port bindings, is static is the default. I got some other settings here, but we're just looking at port bindings right now. So static's the default, I can uh, pick ephemeral, no bindings. I'm gonna select, select static, and notice in this case, by default, it's gonna say, okay, I'm gonna spin up eight ports for you. Great, whatever. We're looking at the bindings here. I'm gonna go next, I'm gonna go finish. Great, there's my production. Let's go to a VM over here. Uh, let me just actually, uh, um, power, power off this test VM. There's no operating system in that VM. It doesn't really matter. Uh, let's right click the test VM. Let's go edit settings. Let's go to my network. Right now, I'm going to put it on that production network. And I'm going to say OK, OK. And that's it. <clears throat> now, let's go back to my network here. Let's go to production. Let's go to ports. And you see that there's a bunch of ports made. You'll see that test has been assigned to it. Okay, port 97, and I've got two, four, six, eight ports. Remember, it spun up eight ports for me, so test took one. Let's uh, power on test, all right? So I'm going to power on test. <clears throat> again, it doesn't have an OS. It doesn't really matter. Um, and you'll see that, again, uh, if I go back to my port group, production, test is still on 97. i got to remember that, 97. So it's up and running. Now let's power it off. Let's power off that VM. Again, you should always do shutdowns, not just straight power off, okay? Um, so anyways, I don't have an OS in there, so it doesn't matter. Let's go back to my port group. And again, if I go to ports, you'll see there's 97 is still assigned to that VM. So static binding, basically vCenter assigns that port to that VM. And I don't care where that VM is running. It could be running on this host, that host, doesn't matter. As long as it's on the same distributed switch, that's always going to get that port, which is great because we want to capture statistics, all that kind of stuff. So that makes perfect sense. Sort of like in the real world, you're not gonna every day walk in your environment, I think I'll plug this server into that port. You're not gonna do that, right? Um, <clears throat> let's create another port group, right click, port, uh, distributed port group, new distributed port group. 
let's call it core group dash production slash ephemeral Ephem Ephem I'm gonna probably mess this Moral. <laughs> Did I spell it right? I don't know. Okay, whatever. So I'll go next. Now I'm gonna pick my static bind. I'm gonna pick ephemeral. Notice the number of ports. No longer the it no longer assigns a default number of ports. It says, okay, I'll create ports when you need it, and I'll turn them off, I'll get rid of them when you don't. So I'll go next, finish. There we go. Let's click on that port group. Notice there's no ports. Let's go over to my VM, to test VM, and uh, let's <clears throat> excuse me. Let's right click on test VM, edit settings. Let's go to change the port group. And let's put on ephemeral. And I'll say okay. And I'll say okay. So that's done. Just give it a few seconds here. Okay, we'll just a little bit of time. Let's go back to that port group. Ephemeral. There's no ports. What's going on? Right? Let's go to here. Let's go to test. Power it on. And there we go. It's powered on. Let's go back to the ephemeral port group. And you see now port 105 has been assigned to it. Okay, so ephemeral ports get assigned by V. Sorry, get assigned uh, to the to the to VM when you power it off. Okay, and it's the host that's assigning. You can relate the ephemeral to like the standard switch. Okay, um, vCenter doesn't control it; uh, the host controls it. In this case, the host is assigning this port. Okay, great. Uh, let's power off the VM. Let's in there. Power off. Let's go back to here. Let's refresh this. And we still see it's kind of still there, even though it's powered off. Let's go back to here now. Let's power it on. Let's hope it doesn't make a liar out of me. That was a port 105, right? Let's power it on. There we go. Let's go back to here. Notice it's 106 now. So the port gets destroyed when you power on the VM, or sorry, power it off. And then when you power it on, it gets reassigned. Okay, um, so that's ephemeral. You know, it, when you turn off and turn on the VMs, it can get a different port. Why is this important? Okay, no pun intended. Import it, anyways. Um, when you go to restore your vCenter server, so first of all, you may get some performance questions. Well, which one's better? Which should I go with? The static is good. There's nothing wrong with the static. It spins up ports, and that's it. If you say I'm going to make everything ephemeral, every time you turn off a VM, power on a VM, turn off a VM. We're going through all this extra work, getting rid of ports, reassigning ports, all that kind of stuff, right? And it's also, if, you're, if you've got some kind of software you want to track, security software, I want to track where this VM is from its port, obviously ephemeral is not the solution. So when are you going to use ephemeral? Let me go back into here, uh, edit test. Oh, I don't want to edit notes. Sorry about that. Let's go back and edit settings of test. And let's go into browse. Let's put it back to production. I'm going to say OK. I'm going to say OK. I'm going to delete that ephemeral port group. I'm going to right click. Goodbye. It's gone. All right. So I got no ephemeral port groups here. The big thing here is when you go to restore a vCenter server. This is the big part. Like you could run all day, all year long with static ports, never have an issue. But when you go to do a restore of your vCenter server, if your vCenter server is on a port, so, sorry, is your vCenter server is on a uh, a standard switch, then it doesn't matter. If your vCenter server is on a distributed switch that it manages and it's managing those hosts, this is very important, okay? Because when you go to do a restore, remember your vCenter server is dead, it's gone. What's going to happen? Remember, vCenter controls the static ports, right? So at this point, what's going to happen is when you go to do a restore, the host is going to try and say, okay, I'm going to assign a port to it. It can't because vCenter is not there. So you get like this chicken and egg thing. So you can run into some big issues. Let me show you an example here just real quick. Let me go into here. I've got my, my um, I'm going to mount my, let's pretend my vCenter server died. It's gone. All right. So let me go to do my restore. I got a video on doing restores of vCenter, by the way. You can watch that. Maybe I'll leave a link towards it at the end. I'm going to go into Windows here. I'm going to go into my installer. And I'm gonna pretend again my vCenter's dead. I'm gonna click on restore. Uh, I'm gonna move this out of the way or move this up. And I'm gonna go next. Come on, I'm gonna go next. I'm gonna agree to the license again. Let's we'll quickly go through this. That's my path for my vCenter. Okay, that's good enough. Oh, uh, that's it's asking me my backup details. So I had to do a backup of this, of this beforehand. So let me go next. Let me go next. Just real fast, you can watch my video on doing restores. I'm going to restore it to this host. Remember, my vCenter is dead. So, oh, okay, I need to, 
you know, I, I'm doing a restore. So it's going to deploy a new vCenter server VM powered on and do a restore from my FTP server. Again, you can watch a video on that. I'll leave links for the end. And there's, uh, yeah, okay, that's the host I'm going to connect to. So yeah, go ahead, connect to that. What's the name of the VM, whatever, I'll call it site A, vCenter appliance, restore. What's the password for? Okay, whatever. All this stuff is not a problem so far, isn't it, right? So, okay, what size am I going to do? I'll do small. That sounds good. It's asking me what data store. I'll put it on that data store. I'll go thin disk. That's fine. Now it's asking me, okay, so it reached out to that host, and it's actually looking for a port group on that host that that host can assign this vCenter server. Notice there's nothing there. That's where the problem comes in. Notice I'll click on the info here. When your host is used as a deployment target, non-ephemeral distributed virtual port groups, those are static, are not supported and hence not shown in the dropdown. So it will not see it because this host needs to assign that port to it. It can't because vCenter is not there. So you're in a bit of a bind now. How do I restore vCenter? vCenter is not there. I got static ports. Well, I'll show you a little paper, a document here. There is a write-up, but basically you're going to have to um, somehow create like a standard switch, a temporary one, uh, and create a port group on there that, again, that host can manage the standard switch, do a restore, then migrate things across. So this becomes challenging at this point, especially if you only got two NICs in your host. You may have to rip a NIC from, from your distributed switch. Again, if you've got a standard switch in your host, and you got distributed switch, this doesn't matter. But right now I'm in a full distributed switch environment and no ephemeral ports. Let me go back. Let me go over to here. Let's create a, let's uh, right click on my management port. I'm gonna edit settings, port binding. Uh, by the way, um, my vCenter is down, right? So I wouldn't be able to do this, but I'm showing you what you should do. So there, one of the recommendations from the VMware validated design is to make your management ports uh, ephemeral. So I'm gonna say no binding on my management port because that's where my vCenter server would be. So I'll say, okay. Oh, it won't let me do that. Okay, okay. I should have done that in the beginning when I created it, but let's create a new port here. That doesn't really matter with our demo. Let's go uh, distributed switch, new distributed switch port group. I'll call this pg-manage, oops management dash ephemeral and i'll go next i'll make it ephemeral no bindings go next finish there we go let's go back to my restore and what i'm going to show you if i go next now you see from the drop down i do get a choice all right so that's kind of a really big thing okay you may be running for years and all of a sudden now you need to do a restore your vcenter and if you got no if you don't have any non-static ports or ephemeral ports, you're going to have a challenge here. So let me just get this document up for you. So this here, this document, uh, again, look at the ID here, article ID 324492, okay? Uh, this talks about that when choosing a port binding types or consider the attached VMs. I won't go through and read the whole thing, but it says static binding when a virtual machine or VM kernel port is connected to a port group with static bindings. Um, it's automatically immediately assigned a reserved port for that guaranteeing connectivity at all times. When the port, the port is disconnected, when the VM is, or the VM kernel port is moved to a different port group. So we get rid of the port, the virtual machine or VM kernel, uh, configure static bindings grouped only through vCenter server. So it's looking after that static binding is the default, uh, settings recommended for general use, which is great. Pretty much you can do that for all stuff. Ephemeral, which I explained before, um, ephemeral, uh, is, uh, okay, is assigned to a VM by the host when the VM is powered on and its NIC is connected in a connected state. When the VM is powered off, the virtual machine is disconnected from the ephemeral, uh, is deleted, which you've seen, right? Um, so here they give you a flexibility to manage VMs. It's only ephemeral bindings, okay, blah, 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 blah. Ephemeral ports are generally used for recovery purposes when there is a need to provision ports directly on the host bypassing vCenter. And they give you a couple of reasons here, right? So what you want to do, if you've got your vCenter server on a management port group that it's managing, right? And it's on that port group. You got a chicken and egg scenario now. You want to make sure your vCenter server is on a port group that's ephemeral in state or 
if you don't have that, make sure you've got a one there you could do a restore to. So I would just personally say, okay, let's make the management pork group ephemeral and have whatever management appliances attached to that. That's up to you. If you don't want to do that, if you go, no, no, I want a really strict control on my VM kernel ports and all that, I don't want them uh, you know, uh, going to different ports, you could create a pork group, ephemeral pork group, just for vCenter server, okay? Uh, or uh, you could just create an ephemeral pork group as, just as a backup and never use it unless you need to do a restore, which, again, you don't have to do that, right? Just in case you're in an environment, um, yeah, uh, pork bindings considerations, or they talk a little bit more about it. Um, so here they talk a little bit about, okay, what happens, uh, recover when it connected to distribute. Uh, there's a link here. If you did this, if you didn't, if you didn't have ephemeral and you don't have standard switches, they talk a little bit about that in the, that link right here, what kind of a process and what you could actually go through here, uh, to help you do this, but it's going to be extra work. So you really want to be proactive here. Um, put your vCenter server to be at a minimum on a management port group that's ephemeral. So if six months from now, a year from now, you got to do a restore, you're okay, right? You don't have to really start jumping through hoops to try to figure out how to get around these issues. Um, but that's it. That was a quick and simple little uh, video, folks. Uh, that was actually brought to my attention by one of my students a week ago. You best. Shout out to you, dude. Thank you very much. I got the question in the class. I go, you know what? I've never heard of that one before, right? And you know what? I don't know everything. I, you know, sometimes I learn stuff in classes that I'm teaching. Anyhow, that's it. Um, hope you enjoyed this. Leave comments and questions down below. Uh, please don't send me email with questions or, or, or LinkedIn. Um, uh, uh, the YouTube analytics sees the interactions in the comment section, and that helps out, you know, with my channel. Uh, also, uh, please consider supporting the channel by subscribing. Uh, if there's something you want to see me cover, leave it down below and uh, I'll see what I can do. All right. Uh, thanks again. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.